Greetings colleagues, fellow teachers and educators around the world. I'm Nico Sifakis. On today's 5-minute definitions for teachers in a hurry, wash back. If you are in this profession, chances are that you spend a decent amount of time and energy tutoring students to sit a particular so-called high-stakes exam. What are high-stakes exams? They are the standardized exams that offer certification of proficiency in English that is widely accepted and recognized in different professional and academic settings. These are the exams that are widely sought after by large numbers of school-going students in countries like Brazil, Colombia and Argentina, Greece and Turkey, China, Japan and Taiwan. The importance of these tests can shape the attitudes and expectations of the different players involved. For example, learners and their parents want to prepare quickly for these exams and get the coveted certificate. This often triggers those school principals who are in this very competitive and, let's be honest, lucrative game and impacts the teachers who select textbooks that are specifically designed to meet the demands of those exams. The effect that high-stakes tests have on teaching, learning, assessing and even use before they are taken is known as washback. Tests can and do influence teaching and learning. In particular, tests can influence what and how teachers teach and what and how learners learn in formal classroom settings. Washback can be positive or negative. We have positive washback when there is a seamless link, a match between what is taught and what is tested. If the test actually tests the authentic, interactive language use promoted by the teacher, then we have positive washback, in the sense that the learners are exposed to tasks that prompt them to use language authentically and communicatively, and they know that that is exactly what the final test will require them to do. For example, if we intend to teach speaking skills, we should test speaking skills, and vice versa. Here's another example of positive washback. If tests demand authentic writing, then textbooks integrate writing activities of that kind. On the other hand, negative washback occurs when there is a discrepancy between the goals of instruction, as stated in the syllabus or curriculum, and the focus of testing. This often leads to neglecting these goals in favour of preparing for the test, what is known as teaching to the test. An example of negative washback would be a test consisting only of controlled writing, for example, a dictation exercise or filling in blanks in a given paragraph. That would encourage the teaching of linguistic accuracy rather than actual language. Washback involves test developers, examination boards and coursebook materials, especially the way they interpret and specify the requirements of any exam. However, washback also involves the teachers themselves. In fact, teachers are at the core of every washback situation, since it is the teachers who will interpret, filter and eventually decide whether and to what extent to choose to teach aspects of a given coursebook. This also means that, irrespective of how much a coursebook is affected by washback, the teachers exercise a lot more influence on the content of teaching and on the methods of teaching. It goes without saying that learners are also a major group of stakeholders too. They are at the receiving end. Learners are also impacted and are capable of influencing the washback process too, since this is reciprocal and essentially interactive. So, why is this notion of washback of interest to us? Because it reflects the impact that the testing culture that we live in has on the way that we teach and the way that our learners learn. I'm not arguing here that high-stakes tests are a bad thing. On the contrary, well-designed tests, that is, tests that prioritize the testing of communicative language use, have a positive washback, and because these tests are high-stakes, they are sought after by learners, which means that what they learn and how they learn is in the right direction. What teachers need to be able to do is locate the type of washback that characterizes their teaching situation. As I mentioned earlier, we can locate washback, positive or negative, in every phase of the teaching and learning process. 
Also, a key role in determining the type of washback is played by the attitudes, expectations and decisions of stakeholders or participants in the teaching and learning process. For example, teachers, learners, administrators, parents, publishers, materials developers. I'll add some of the most essential readings on washback in the description below to get you started with washback. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. Let me know in the comments. Also, please let me know which other terms you'd like me to include in this section. Thanks for watching. See you soon.